This is the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xe. And what that means is it's a Grand Cherokee plug-in hybrid, or PHEV as the Americans call it. Now I've been looking forward to driving this vehicle locally because it's got an efficient inline four-cylinder petrol engine and then an electric motor paired with a lithium-ion battery pack for a claimed range of about 52 kilometers. We'll find out how close that is to the claim once we get it out in the real world, but we're gonna test this on road and off. I've been looking forward to it. Let's get into it. Starting from $129,950 before on-road costs, the 4xe Summit Reserve 5-seater is $10,500 more expensive than a similarly equipped 7-seat Grand Cherokee L Summit Reserve and $26,700 more than the 5-seat Overland V6. On top of the flagship model, there are only two options you can add. Premium paint costs $1,750, while the Advanced Tech Group costs $5,500. Quilted Palomo leather trimmed seats are standard, along with 12-way power lumbar adjustment for the driver and passenger with memory, front seat massage function, ventilated front seats and outboard rear seats, dual pane panoramic sunroof, 10.1 inch infotainment screen, 10.25 inch digital driver's display, premium audio system, automatic LED headlights, a black painted roof, electric tailgate, and digital rear view mirror. Okay, so now you know what it costs, let's have a look at what it's like inside the cabin. And of course, with a Grand Cherokee, you would expect a level of luxury, and that's exactly what you get. I think the most obvious thing, and the first thing to note, is all the screens. This one has got the optional passenger screen over here, which controls things like navigation and infotainment, so the passenger can act a bit like a co-pilot or control what you're listening to. You get another screen here which controls the infotainment functionality, but then you also get an interactive screen for the driver, as well as a screen up here in the rear view mirror. They're all really well positioned. Oh, and I forgot the head-up display too. That's another one. So all in all, if you get the optional screen there, you've got one, two, three, four, five. Without that, you've still got four. All of these screens actually work particularly well. They're visible. They're easy to use, they're not too complex. The infotainment system itself, again, very easy to work. And I like the advancements that Jeep has made with this screen and this system. Works really well with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. We've tested Bluetooth, it works well too. You've also got optional wireless charging in this car, but then two different USB-C ports on either side and two different USB-A ports, as well as HDMI. And the other thing worth noting is that this system is able to connect two phones via Bluetooth. So you can have two smartphones and select which one is the main one. All in all though, this looks and feels like a very high quality cabin. And I think it's important that Jeep executes that because at this level, at this price point, that is what the buyer is going to expect. Is it as good to drive as it feels to sit inside the driver's seat? Let's find out. There's room in the second row for three adults and the bench is neatly sculpted so you sit into it rather than on it like you do in some less comfortable SUVs. The second row in the 4xe is a good one for family buyers and road trippers. Visibility is excellent too, with a large glass house making the view outside broad, adding to the sense of space when you're in the cabin for long periods of time. As buyers demand in this segment, there's also plenty of luggage space behind that second row. With the seats up, Jeep claims there's 1,067 litres available and expands out to 2,004 litres if you fold the second row down. Silence is often used to describe luxury and that's what the Grand Cherokee provides from the confines of its beautifully appointed cabin under electric power. As I noted on the international drive, the 2-litre turbocharged 4-cylinder petrol engine is a good one too. It's paired to a 100 kilowatt electric motor for combined outputs of 280 kilowatts and 637 newton meters. And while that engine alone would not be enough to satisfy a large SUV buyer, combined with the clever electric system, it doesn't fall short of what the segment needs. Despite the folly, currently anyway, of driving an EV anywhere remote off-road, Jeep is keen to emphasize the idea that you can save battery power to tackle a tough trail in pure electric mode. And that's exactly what we did at launch. It's worth reiterating again that you're not going to use this functionality too often in a vast country like Australia, 
where genuine off-road driving is often a long way from anything. However, like when we tested the Hummer EV off-road, there's absolutely no doubt that an electric four-wheel drive is going to be an impressive tool in terms of what it can do and how easy it is as the driver. Now, having had an experience with this in the United States and driving the seven-seat version locally, the new Jeep Grand Cherokee is actually a really impressive platform. This is a good large SUV. It's a good four-wheel drive. It's good on-road. It's good off-road. I think the interesting thing with the 4xe or the plug-in hybrid is the cost. This starts at 129,000 bucks, just over that, plus on-road costs in Australia. So it's not cheap. I think the other thing that'll be interesting is to see whether Australians can get their head around the fact that you might save the electric power for when you get to where you're going. So you drive there with petrol power, then you do some off-roading in EV mode because this does work in electric mode off-road. As always, we're interested to see what you think. Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit like if you've enjoyed the video, click on subscribe so you stay up to date with all of our latest content and the full review of the Jeep Grand Cherokee plug-in hybrid that's over at drive.com.au.